an entitled jerk comes into Walmart and tries to return an entertainment center that we blatantly do not sell. And even though I tried to ask for a receipt of some kind to prove that he purchased it here, this guy gets angrier in such a way where I couldn't help but smile and nearly start laughing at his temper tantrum. And I've honestly never been more blown away by an adult making this kind of ruckus. Here's what happened. Okay, so this happened back in 2000 when I was still just a young, naive kid that had only dealt with maybe two or three entitled people in my life. I had yet to develop the thousand yard stare or the hard shell that comes along with working retail. So I'm working returns when a man about 30 or 35 years old walks up leading an employee that is wheeling up a large entertainment center. This thing is fully assembled and has ornate wood details with a very lovely finish. In other words, it's something you wouldn't find at this kind of store. The man starts off very cordial. He says to me, I want my money back. I thought it would fit in my living room, but it's too small. I asked to see a receipt or perhaps the box it came in, but he didn't have either of those. So I called the manager of home furnishings just to see if there's a similar one for a price and a barcode, mainly because I doubt we sell anything like this. I asked the man if he'd like to have a seat while the manager checked for this entertainment center. Well, suddenly this guy begins turning red as he raises his voice. He says to me, do I look like I need to sit down? Do you think I need to calm down? Now I respond politely, trying to de-escalate the situation. No, sir, I simply thought you might want to sit while you wait. I then smile to help the next customer. His voice then raised in pitch as he shouted, are you laughing at me? It's not funny. I didn't respond as I attempted to help the next customer in line, but it was hard not to find it funny that this man was angry about me doing my job. We are required to smile and greet customers. The manager of furnishing returns and explains that we have nothing similar to this item and asked him where he bought it. The man raises his voice again and says to me, I bought it here. I demand to speak to the manager. So the home furnishing manager asked him to wait while I contact the floor manager so that he could come and speak to this man. Meanwhile, the man is ranting and screaming even more. Useless employees making me wait. Can't do their jobs at all. Why are you smiling? Now, the last part is directed at me. He now sounds like a little boy throwing a temper tantrum. And right now, it is super difficult not to laugh. My co-workers, being veterans of perpetual nonsense, are barely reacting at all. The other customers are trying hard to stifle their chuckles and avert their gazes. This doesn't help, as this man's voice now sounds something like an angry Mickey Mouse. Children are now stopping as they're walking by with their parents, hoping to find out why Mickey's shouting at us in the store. I'm now pretty red-faced, and the customer's just looking on in shock, as this man looks like he's about to explode like an overinflated balloon. And he sounds like he sucked down enough helium to do just that. Thankfully, the manager appeared and settled the man down. He pulled him away from view of the service desk, and he returned to tell me to take a break and calm down before returning to the irate customer. He was able to get the man to understand all the way up until he explained that we could not take it back without a receipt. The irate man growled at a similar pitch to a chihuahua before storming off, all without his fancy entertainment center. I was told that I was not cut out for working the service desk and was instead demoted to cashier. It took almost a year to develop thick skin that I needed to work retail. Now, the entertainment center was silently auctioned for workers to bid on, and the proceeds went to a children's miracle network. And I'm honestly still blown away by the way this guy acted. Yeah, that's like really cringy behavior if you ask me. Like this guy's screaming over an entertainment system that they clearly don't have. He doesn't have a receipt. He has no proof of purchase. He doesn't have the box it came in. Literally nothing. If anything, he probably bought this from some other store years ago. And he's now like, hey, let me just return it to what I'm assuming is Walmart. Like that's really weird behavior. And honestly, how did he think it was going to go? But you know what? I think the original poster handled it well. I think I would definitely start laughing as well if this guy's voice was raising so much that he sounded like an angry Mickey Mouse about to take down anybody in front of them because that truly sounds hilarious. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Today, I need to confess that I slept with my best friend's fiance and even though they're on the verge of getting married, I've decided that I'm going to take this secret all the way down to my grave because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so I met my best friend in high school and we've been attached to the hip ever since. Although she moved some years ago, so we stopped hanging out and talking regularly. And that's still true to this day. We both have our own separate lives, especially now that we're adults. The connection is still there, but there is a significant physical distance between us. Anyways, her fiance had hit on me a handful of times before and every time I told her. It was a no-brainer. She was my best friend and I would never keep something like that from her. She assured me it was nothing to worry about and told me that he'd done that before. It wasn't very 
very reassuring to me, considering how serious they were. And this is right before they got engaged too, by the way. But I didn't want to overstep a boundary and berate her with things she already was aware of and choosing just to turn a blind eye to it. Fast forward to a year or two ago, and he reaches out to me again, hitting on me. But this time, he's telling me things he wants to do with me, if you know what I mean. And I entertained it for a week or two, sent a couple of scandalous messages, but then blocked him because of how wrong it felt. And obviously, I didn't tell her about these exchanges. Well, sometime after I blocked him, they got engaged. And although I expressed happiness to my friend, I was worried about their future considering his past actions, especially towards me. Some months passed, and eventually I unblocked him. I don't remember why, but I'm sure it was a mix of curiosity and anxiety about her questioning why he could no longer get in contact with me. I mean, I wasn't sure why he needed to, but the only reason we got in contact to begin with was because my friend wanted us to be acquainted. Now, I'm not sure how, but he immediately noticed that I had unblocked him and started to message me. We began talking again, and eventually, after some months, I made plans to go visit my friend. She had reached out to me somewhat recently and wanted to hang out, and her fiancé expressed that he was more than excited to have me over as well. I went over and we share several glances, as well as a couple discreet conversations while she was away. At one point, he had followed me to their bathroom and begged me to spend some quality time with him, if you know what I mean. Now, I failed to mention up until this point that he doesn't necessarily attract me, so a lot of his advances really weirded me out on the inside, but I was so caught up in the attention and the scandal that it just didn't seem to matter to me. We waited until my last day when it was time for me to go home, and then we met at a discreet location. He came over to my car, we moved into the back seat, and I think the rest can explain itself. He left, I went home, and I felt dazed for the entire drive home. I feel guilty now, months later, every time I think about it, but surprisingly, not enough to ever tell her. I think this is the sort of thing that I will probably take to my grave. I shouldn't have been so heartless that I did that, but I don't have the guts to ever tell her what happened. He wants to do it again before they get married, but I keep leaving his messages on red. I don't want to block him again, but I never want to scheme behind my friend's back with him ever again. Some of the things he's told me would make her stomach turn, and I would know because it makes mine turn, and I'm not even the one he's cheating on. My only hope is that one of them miraculously calls it off before the wedding. I've encouraged him multiple times to do so, but he always says that he just can't do it, and that even though they aren't completely right for each other, he still can't stop with going through with the marriage. So please, hold off any harsh judgment. I can assure you that I know how heartless it was for me to do such a thing, especially as I've been cheated on many times before, but I just needed to admit this somewhere because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, I know you're not looking for harsh judgments, but I'm going to judge you very harshly right now, and I can honestly say that what you're doing is awful. Like, this altogether is completely disgusting and so wrong, especially right before she's about to get married, and if you have any common sense about you, you would put aside your own ego and pride and just tell this lady exactly what happened, because in my opinion, if he's doing this with you, who knows who else he's trying to do this with? You just happen to be the person that unblocked him. And I've got to say, your way of justifying this behavior is so wrong. You passed this off as if this was something that your friend already knew about, but then took it to another level when you messed around with him. Not to mention all the sketchy messages that you've been sending him as well. Like when your friend questioned you about why he could not get in contact with you, that would have been the perfect moment to be like, okay, this is what's going on, and this is why I decided to step away from him. But instead, you're choosing to stay silent and just go along with this, even though you went to visit your friend, probably not even wanting to see your friend, but instead wanting to mess around with your best friend's fiance. So yes, you're a massive jerk for doing this, and I think your friend has every right to know, because she's about to make a lifetime commitment with a jerk who will openly and easily cheat on her at the drop of a hat, and she does not deserve to deal with that in the slightest. Am I the jerk for not wanting my boyfriend to go to another country on vacation with his female co-worker who I have never met? Because right now, he is being very defensive, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My boyfriend and I have been together for a little over two years. Lately, he has been talking about traveling and going on this trip to South America with his co-workers. And yes, it's multiple co-workers. And this has been an idea for about two weeks, maybe even less. He said his co-workers have family there that could show him around and even give him a place to stay in the meantime. Well, today he asked if he should just say screw it and book the ticket because it's super cheap. And he also wouldn't have to worry about finances for a place to stay. I said, I mean, why not? And when I asked him who would be going on this trip, he said his co-worker, who we will call Becca. Becca is not her real name. I proceeded to ask how old she was, and he said she was in her 30s. Now, he is 27, and I'm 26 for the record. Now, I felt immediately uncomfortable. For starters, I've never
never met a coworker with that name, and he has been working there for about a year, which means I have been at his workplace numerous times. I'm also seeing this as a fact that they are pretty close, especially considering meeting up with someone overseas and being so gracious as to offer a place to stay. Which, by the way, he said they wouldn't be staying together and that she would just be showing him around. Now, I'm also looking at it from a woman's perspective, and I would never invite a male coworker to a vacation overseas or a vacation period, no matter how long I've been working with them, especially alone. I mean, you never know someone's true intention. That is just my opinion and view on it, and I'm not speaking for all women. I told him I am uncomfortable with it, and he immediately got defensive and said I'm not supporting his first international trip alone, that I shouldn't look at it that way, and that it's strictly platonic. It was also mentioned that I have not made it a priority to travel, which I do not get paid well, and I also have a child and a bunch of expenses that I'm just trying to keep myself above the water, so to say. So that is why traveling has not been my priority right now. And the key word here is right now. So now I don't know what to do. I am very uncomfortable with it. And yes, I feel bad for holding him back from traveling or not supporting his trip, especially because he's been wanting to travel for a while now. I don't want to control his life, but I do know if the roles were reversed, he would be feeling very uncomfortable with it as well. I get yearning to travel. I mean, I yearn to travel as well, but this is very uncomfortable for me. So I don't know. Am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all. I see completely where you're coming from and I think you're being completely rational. Now, if you went along with him on this trip and stayed with him while this friend is like showing you around their home country, then sure, that's completely fine. I would have no problem with that because I would also be there present for the vacation itself. But for the opportunity for him to be alone with this lady that you don't know and you've never met or had any conversation with or had the chance to like get a gauge for who she is, that just seems super sketchy and it just does not sit well with me. And I completely reject the notion that you're somehow like insecure about him traveling because this just crosses a weird line in my opinion. So no, you are not the jerk for expressing this discomfort because in my opinion, the way he's going about doing this is really sketchy. And I think if I was in your shoes, I would feel the exact same way. Am I the jerk for not respecting my roommate's curfew that she inflicted on me, claiming that she wants me back by 12 o'clock since showing up any later would be a massive disruption of her sleep schedule? Because right now, I really don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm in a fight with my roommate and my friend suggested I get additional opinions on here. For some background, I'm a freshman in college living in a dorm and I got a randomly assigned roommate. We live very different lifestyles. I like to stay up late and sleep in late and she likes to go to bed early and wake up early. At the beginning of the year, she told me she likes to go to bed early and she is a light sleeper and I told her that I like to stay up late and we came to the agreement that she could turn out the light at any point and that I would be quiet after that. She goes to bed between between 9 and 11 o'clock p.m. and I often get ready for bed and lay in bed at these times just out of respect. However, there are generally two to three nights a week, one of which is a weekday, that I stay up and out past this time. I keep the light off and I do nothing more than crawl into bed when I return home between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, about three weeks ago, my roommate told me she doesn't like me staying out late because it affects her sleep and that she wants me back by 12 o'clock. My friends have made fun of me since then because out of respect for her, I have, for a few exceptions, left parties, study sessions, and hangouts early to go home on time. Fast forward and on Monday night, I was out playing board games with friends and I lost track of time. I noticed it was 12.30 and out of respect for her, I decided to pull an all-nighter with my friends in the common room. I returned that morning at 8.15 to get ready and shower because I had a meeting at 9. However, I got an angry text later that day calling me out for returning at 8.15 despite me doing my best to remain quiet and even not returning home at an unreasonable hour, as I would have been up at that time anyways. I responded and apologized for waking her up, but explained that I stayed out all night for her and I did nothing wrong. I also explained that while I was willing to compromise and be back most nights at midnight, as long as I was courteous, there would be nights I would come back later. I then got a message last night that she had scheduled a meeting with our RA to mediate, and I honestly want to know if I'm in the wrong or if she's in the wrong, or if this is just a bad situation because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to say this as nicely as I can, but your roommate is completely delusional. You pay tuition, room, and board, and you are literally free to come and go as you please, just as much as your roommate is. Like, you can literally do whatever you want. This lady does not rule your life, and she cannot make rules for you. So if you want to come back at 8.15 in the morning or at 3 o'clock in the morning and quietly come back to your bed, then guess what? You can do that, and she can't do anything about it. So this weird controlling, like, passive-aggressive,
aggressive attitude she has literally does not have a foot to stand on because I guarantee you when you get in that meeting with the RA, she's not going to complain about you coming in late at night. She's going to try and make this sound like you're making a lot of noise and that you're somehow disturbing her peace, which from the sounds of it, that's definitely not happening. I don't know if there's an option at your university to get a different roommate or like have some way of switching things around, but I would definitely look into that sooner than later because your roommate sounds like a complete delusional idiot and she has no right to try and control your life in the slightest. My sister is getting a divorce and asked to stay with me without giving a clear timeline of how long she would stay. And I'm now at a point where I really need to know how long she's expecting to live with me and my husband. Because at this point, I'm seriously not sure how to bring this up. So my sister and her partner have been rocky for years and are deciding to officially split up. I won't air out their details as it is their business, but it was a mutual agreement to get a divorce. She texted me yesterday asking if she could come stay with me and my husband and came over as soon as I said absolutely. For reference, things got heated and her ex-partner told her to leave. My husband was okay with it as he is very supportive, but we never really discussed how long she needed to stay. I, of course, want to be there for her any way that I can, but me and my husband have personally and rather recently gone through some hardships and hosting a guest for an extended period of time is a lot for us right now. So it really makes me question what the best way of opening up this conversation would be. I don't want her to feel unwanted as she is my sister and I do love her very much and I want to help her and be supportive in any way that I can. I'm happy she was comfortable enough to come to me in a situation like this so I really don't want to ruin that by coming off rude in any way. Things are obviously fresh so letting things settle is the first plan. But after our talk last night, her ex-partner is planning on moving out late May and is currently filing for divorce and although she didn't ask me, we wouldn't be able to host her that long and I'm not sure the best way to go about letting her know. Now as some side notes, we have been no contact with our parents for a few years. They were awful and essentially ruined any form of relationship me and my sister could have had together as kids. So we grew up never being close. We reconnected as adults and have worked through our childhood issues together, but we still aren't as close as other siblings usually are. So her staying with either of our parents just isn't an option. I'm the only family that she has. So this is a pretty delicate situation that I want to handle as respectfully as possible. What should I do? Okay, so in my opinion, I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to open up a discussion and say exactly what needs to be said. Like, you can probably say this in a way where it's kind and nice, but also sets very clear boundaries about how long she can stay. And I personally don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I couldn't even begin to assume that she would somehow feel slighted by you saying, hey, we can help you out for right now, but based on circumstances in our life, we can't do it for long term or something like that. Now, that's how I would handle it. Obviously, you know your sister way better than I or anybody else would. So there is probably some nuance here that maybe you can navigate and figure out as you go along. But setting up clear boundaries of like what you can do and like what kind of timeline you can expect is not a bad thing. Because while yes, what's going on in her life really is tragic, you do also have to think about your life. And if her staying long term just doesn't fit that criteria, then honestly, she definitely needs to know. Am I the jerk for snitching on one of my co-workers after they abandoned their job and left me completely alone? Because right now they're getting suspended. And at this point, I don't know if I'm the one at fault. Here's what happened. I'm a 23 year old female and I recently worked on a temp project at my job that required us to break into teams and work 12 hour shifts. And mine was from 7 o'clock p.m. until 7 o'clock a.m. Towards the end of the project, my partner was taken off for personal reasons and was replaced with someone else. Since this was towards the end, the person who sat on shift with me had no responsibility and mostly their job was to sit at the station since it wasn't supposed to be unattended or just answer the phone if I was already on the phone. Well, the person who was put on shift with me showed up at 7 o'clock p.m. and everything was fine. At around 10 o'clock p.m., they say they're going to grab dinner and asked if I wanted anything. And I said no due to having already bought my food and so they went to go get some food and they never came back. At around 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm starting to worry and I start calling and texting and I just get no answer. I try looking to see if maybe they were just like chilling in another office, but no, they were literally nowhere to be found. At around 4.30 in the morning, they finally answered and they say they were in the office asleep. And I know that wasn't the case because I had checked there multiple times. What made me mad was that they actually started laughing and they thought it was funny on top of the lie of actually being there. I said I couldn't believe they just left and they said they would come back, but I responded by saying the shift was almost over. It was close to five in the morning and the busy part was literally done. Though I still think they should have come back and this person is one of my boss 
bosses, so I can't make the call to them not to come in or finish the shift, but eventually I get off the phone and I wait, and as you might be guessing, they really never did come back, and at this point, I'm just super angry. So, every day of the temp project has been rough for the night shift, and one of the top supervisors for our team as a whole checks on me every day after my shift, so I decided to tell them what happened, how the person left me on shift after only doing, what, three hours of work? And when I said this, my supervisor was angry, and even more so because he personally asked this person to sit on the shift with me so that I can occasionally take a break or use the bathroom, but instead, they just left. They literally just had to sit there and just be alive. So as a result, my supervisor gave him suspension that would cut his pay. Now, some important notes about this. The suspension will go in his work file, and it will follow him throughout his entire time in the company. The suspension will potentially make it hard to get promoted in the future, and according to my supervisor, this suspension was a culmination of bad behavior, but this incident was the straw that broke the camel's back. This person did not apologize at all, and my husband is friends with a guy, and they are still buddy-buddy due to my husband not wanting to add to the tension and hostility. Now, everybody, including my husband, says that I should have spoken to him directly instead of telling the supervisor, and apparently, the loss in pay will affect him next month when he has his child support hearing. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you're definitely not the jerk. This guy abandoned his post. He clearly has a history of being an idiot at work, and this is just one of many instances where he's goofed off and not done his job. You're just one of probably many people who have been abandoned on the clock just so he can take a nap in the back office. And sure, of course he wants you to talk to him directly. That way he can probably just blow off anything you're going to say and then try to spin it and get you in trouble. So no, you're definitely not the jerk. His supervisor was probably waiting for a moment like this and any consequences that he incurs is quite literally his own fault and not yours in the slightest. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.